we have a column of student names. And the column goes down a long ways with lots of different students. Each record describes a student accessing the class website. Our goal is simple. We need a unique list of student names and then the date time for the last time they access the class website. In this video, we're going to see how to do it with dynamic arrays. Next video, we'll see how to do it with a pivot table. And two videos out, we'll see how to do it with Power Query. Now later, we want to be able to add new records to the bottom of the table and have our solution update. So we want to convert this proper data set into an Excel table. We go to Insert and click on Table. Or we can use the keyboard Control-T. My table has headers. Click OK. In the Table Design ribbon tab, we come over to Properties, and we want to name this table something smart like Student Data and Enter. Now, we're going to build our report on a different sheet, and it's easy to access columns in an Excel table by using the table name and the column header or field name. So we go over to 1687, and the solution we're going to create in this video only works if you have Microsoft 365 Excel. If that's the case, there are some amazing new array functions, including unique which can look through a column and give us a unique list. In the array argument, I type student. And there in the dropdown, I see the icon for a table. I hit the Tab key. Then we type a square bracket. And sure enough, because it's an Excel table, it has all of the field names for us. We want sortable name. You can use your mouse or use your down arrows. Once you have it highlighted in blue, you can double click with your mouse or hit Tab. Close square bracket. One of the advantages of having an Excel table is we can access these columns anywhere in our workbook. Now I close parentheses. And because this is an array function, when I hit Enter, the results spill. Now notice the second cell is selected and up in the formula bar, it's grayed out. The formula only lives in the top cell. So if we want to edit, we have to come to the top cell. And in fact, we do want to edit. Hit the F2 key. And now we're going to use our second dynamic array function sort. By default, it'll do A to Z, which is what we want. Now when I hit Enter, there's my sorted unique list of student names. Now if we go back to our student data table, the problem is for any given student, there are a lot of dates. But if we're interested in the last time they accessed the class website, we need to understand that dates and times are actually numbers. So amongst all of these numbers, it's the biggest or the maximum one that we want. Back to our report. And in the top cell, we use equals max ifs. Because for this cell right here, we don't want all the dates. We want only the dates for that particular student. So I type student, tab, square bracket. And the column that has the dates we're trying to get the max date in is last access. Close square bracket. And the criteria range is the column with all of the student names. So student, square bracket. And there it is, sortable name, tab close square bracket. Now that's the entire column with all the names. And after typing a comma, the criteria is please only look for that student. Now maxifs knows to only get the date times for that student. Now right now I'm looking at that particular student, but I really want maxifs to spill all the results. So because that cell right there is where the spilled array lives, if I add the spilled range operator pound sign, Instantly, I'm accessing not just that cell, but whatever spills from that cell. Later, if I add new students or take students away, everything will update. Close parentheses, and now when I hit Enter, I have spilled the results. But what are those? Yes, dates are integers, number of days since December 31st, 1899. And times are the proportion of a 24-hour day. So the last thing we need is we need to highlight, and we have to use number formatting. Now if I go to Home, Number Formatting dropdown, that doesn't have what I want. I can go down to More Number Formats, or I can use the keyboard Control-1. And in the Number Group, I want Custom. Now in the Type text box, you can watch this sample here as we type. M, oh, 
that's 9 for September, slash D, D is for day, slash Y, Y, Y. There's the full year. Now we type a space. And we want hours and minutes, so we type HH. And you could see the 13 there. That's military time, colon, minute, MM for minute. And we can leave it as military time, but if you want AM, PM, then you have to type AM slash PM. All of that is the code that allows us to display the date time exactly as we want. Now I hit Enter, and there's the report. Now if we go back to our student data table, I'm going to click in a single cell and then use the keyboard control down arrow to jump to the bottom of the data set. And we have some new records. And because that's an Excel table, if I paste new records at the bottom, the table will expand to include those records and our formulas will update. Now I'm going to move this by using my move cursor. You could use control X and control V. But there it is, move. This is like cutting and pasting. So when I drop it there, the table expands. And sure enough, there's the new latest access date for the first student, 9 7 139 PM. Now stay tuned to our next video where we'll see how to do this with a pivot table, which is by far the easiest method amongst all of these. Although it won't instantly update like our formulas, it's still easy to update. And then in 1689, when we use Power Query, I'll show you how to take the data as it's exported from the student system as a CSV file and import it through Power Query and simultaneously make the report and dump it on a sheet. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.